And he wanted us to trust him all the way, not some way. But, but a lot of times we take the credit for ourselves and, well, this is something I did, amen. But you have to always acknowledge that God is in your life because he is a God that's in the midst of our troubles, in the midst of our cares. In the midst of the human situation, amen, God is there for us. So we have to go on in spite of sometime and in the midst of. But I've discovered also that by faith we have a more certain ground for our lives and our actions that the world is unable to understand. They look at us and they see the life we live. And they can't understand it because, amen, what we do, amen, is not something that they can understand in this world but we can understand it in the world hereafter. For faith makes real those things that are blurred and uncertain in our lives. And we move on faith, isn't that right? It makes evident that which is invisible. Amen, and we learn that in general, in, in general biblical faith, it is the response of the whole man to God. Amen, not just come giving the preacher your hand, amen, and going back and that's the end of it. Amen, it's his response, amen, of the whole man to God as he is revealed in Jesus Christ. In the Bible, faith means trust as well as belief. As a matter of fact, amen, those are the two elements of faith, belief and trust. If you don't have either, amen, you don't have faith. Isn't that right? Amen, so we have to learn to trust God, amen, if we believe him. Amen, the man of faith commits to Jesus Christ, his mind, his heart, his obedience, and his destiny. Amen. I said something on last night. I, I said it, but I believe that, amen, some of you had to fight to make it here this week. Amen. You may not know what you were fighting against, amen, but you had to fight to come to revival this week. Some may have lost the battle. Amen. Some may have started out, got discouraged at the very beginning and say, I'm not going to revival this week. I have too many other things to do. These are the things that let us know, amen, whether our faith can carry us all the way through. There are some people that let anything stop them from doing what God wanted them to do, amen, and try to justify what they do. But I'm going to try to wrap this thing up pretty quick, amen. And uh, so... I've learned that in our Bible there are different metaphors that describe this Christian life. Amen. One of them is running as in a race. Another is walking as in traveling. And another is fighting as in a warfare. Amen. We always talk about, well, I've been running for Jesus for a long time and I ain't got tired yet. Amen. But we have to understand that all of these things is a part of our whole life. Amen. We have to live our life, amen, in Christ, amen, all the way through. But after being saved, I understand how you feel when you first get saved, amen. I know how I was, and, and Rev told me that I was going to have to slow down and, and ease it up because, amen, if I stayed the way I was, God was going to have to take me home. Amen. It was hard for me to live down here when I got saved, amen. Everything I saw was sin. Amen. He called me in the study every now and then and said, boy, you're going have to have to, have to straighten up. God, uh, uh, God gave you a chance. You've got to let God give them other folk a chance. But then I finally began to mellow down and understand what he was talking about. I needed some instruction. Amen. Before I started out, amen, on this Christian journey. Amen. But I know that everybody get, amen, extremely excited, amen, when they first get saved. Amen. And their heart desire, amen, is to serve the Lord. Amen. Don't know how, but their heart desire is just to serve the Lord. Amen. Because their newfound faith has changed their life and changed their relationship with God. And I understand because I know how I feel today. I still feel the same way. My, my desire is to do the will of God. Amen. It's not about me. It's all about Jesus. But without having much training and not knowing what was needed to run this race, amen, they stumble and they fall. But one thing I notice about them is that they start out as quick as they can and run as fast as they can. And I heard, amen, somebody say, I, and I'm sure Reverend Harvey heard him say it too because he got some horses. 
Amen. They say a horse that run fast don't run long. Amen. I think they call that a quarter horse, don't they? Right. Amen. They call that a quarter horse. Amen. So then, uh, I, 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 I think about, amen, that because there are so many that run when they first get saved, and after a while you don't see them anymore because they run out of gas. Isn't that right? Amen. You call those horses quarter horses because they're just good for a quarter mile. Amen. They have a quick start. Amen. Amen. They use them for racing. Amen. In, in a quarter mile. They, and, and, and you know their quickness, amen, starting out the gate, gives them an advantage if they get out before the other horses. Because he doesn't have long to run. Amen. And he's running on a straight track. Isn't that right? Uh, amen. So uh, 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 you can't be no quarter horse in this business. Amen. This is a long, long race. Amen. But I found out for myself that, uh, amen, what we need to try to be is a thoroughbred. Amen. We need to be a thoroughbred. And I know Reverend Harvey know what a thoroughbred is, too. Uh, amen. I had to look it up, but every time I hear Reverend Harvey talk about them horses, and he got Dan Real talking about them, too. Uh, and, uh, and she tell me about them. And our thoroughbred, they say, is a high-spirited and sensitive horse. Amen. Not only that, but he has powerful lungs. Amen. He can hold a lot of air. Isn't that right? And he has strong legs, amen, which makes him especially good for racing. Amen. The thoroughbred runs long, and he runs steady. Not only that, but he runs in a way where he can preserve enough energy, amen, to finish the race with a strong kick. Amen. And that's what we have to be, a good thoroughbred. Amen. But we have to know how far our faith can carry us. Isn't that right? Amen. So as long as you run, amen, the longer you run, amen, you, some song going to come to your mind. And, yeah. Amen. You might sing the song, I've been running for Jesus for a mighty long time, and I'm still running. Yeah. Amen. Everybody I know that you're still running. Yeah. Amen. So when we call on our faith, our faith will enable us, amen, to challenge every obstacle that we have. Isn't that right? And we can go on, amen, trusting in the Lord. Then there is walking, which describes, amen, this Christian walk, this Christian life. And I see there are some, rather than walking, I see them skipping along, if you know what I'm talking about. Yeah. Amen. But we need our faith to help us to stay, amen, on the right road. First of all, it has to get us on the right track first. But we don't allow it, amen, if we start out too fast. Amen. We have to allow it, amen, to give us instructions, amen, and show us the way. I said that some are skipping rather than walking. Yeah. Amen. They are skipping over some parts of the word of God, right. amen, hoping that they can escape responsibility. Right. Amen. Because they are not ready to totally commit their lives to God. Right. And that lets them know, that should let you know that, amen, you don't have the kind of faith, amen, that will carry you through. And you know how far your faith will carry you. Amen. Reverend Harvey mentioned something a few moments ago. And amen, I know that there are a whole lot of things that, amen, that tend to, amen, hold people back from doing that which God wants us to do. But we have to put God first in our life if we want, amen, to be, amen, uh, approved by God. Amen. He called us for a purpose. And that was to be a light unto the world. Amen. But we can't be a light if we can't, amen, fulfill our commitments. Isn't that right? Amen. When I was here, amen, when I was coming along, amen, we had a choir, and our choir knew our responsibility. I think Brother Michael remember that. Sister Ford remember that. Amen. We, we took care of our responsibility as choir members. Isn't that right? Because there was something on the inside that kept pushing us, amen, helping us to be what God wanted us to be in spite of everything. When I first started out, I lived way over on the north side in scenic woods, and I drove over here every weekend. And I just spent the whole weekend because I knew that, amen, I had a job to do. And you're walking, I mean, you're skipping. Amen, and skipping don't allow you to get, amen, the full joy of your religion. Amen, but when the storms of life, amen, starts to blow in your life, 